Praise God, brothers and sisters. We thank God for his goodness. We thank him for loving us. We thank him for his word. We thank him for giving us an opportunity to meet again in his presence. He who started this good work in us, we trust that he'll be, bring it to its accomplishment. Today, uh, I'm reading a scripture out of our Bible study of 10 chapters a day. And we are reading from Exodus chapter 21 to 30. But the scripture I'm going to be reading is cut out of Exodus chapter 23 to uh, from verse 20 up to the end, which is chapter 30, verse 33. I'm sharing this, but this is a scripture that God gave me when I was sharing with someone that he, has, he had put uh, across my path to walk a journey with and so uh, this is a very comforting assuring promise that God made to the children of Israel after they had crossed the Red Sea and they were preparing to walk into the promised land and the word of God says see I am sending an angel ahead of you to guide you along the way and to bring you to the place I have prepared. Pay attention to him and listen to what he says. Do not rebel against him. He will not forgive your rebellion see, since my name is in him. If you listen carefully to what he says and do all that, he's, that I say, I will be an enemy to your enemies and I will oppose those who oppose you. My angel will go ahead of you and bring you into the land of the Amorites, Hittites, Parasites, uh, Canaanites, Hevites, and the Jebusites, and I will wipe them out. Do not bow down before their gods or worship them or follow their practices. You must demolish them and break their sacred stones to pieces. Worship the Lord your God and his blessing will be on your food and water. I'll take away disease from among you and none will miscarry or be barren in your land. I will give you a full lifespan. I'll send my terror ahead of you and throw into confusion any nation you encounter. I will make all your enemies turn their backs and run. I will send the hornet ahead of you to drive the Hevites, the Canaanites, and Hittites out of your way. But I will not drive them out in a single year because the land would become desolate and the wild animals too numerous for you. Little by little, I will drive them out before you until you have increased enough to take possession of the land. I will establish your borders from the Red Sea to the Mediterranean Sea and from the desert to the Ephrates River. I will give into your hands the people who live in the land and you will drive them out before you. Do not make a covenant with them or with their gods. Do not let them live in your land or they will cause you to sin against me because the worship of their gods will certainly be a snare to you. While you read this scripture, I want you to go back to that point when you accepted salvation. It, to me, it resonates well with the time when the children of God crossed the Red Sea. It resonates well with the day when God spoke to Abraham in chapter 15 and he said, if you walk right, in Genesis chapter 15, when he says, if you walk righteously before me, I'll do this and this and that for you. To me, it resonates well with the day Jesus Christ died on the cross. It starts a new chapter. God does not allow his children to go alone in the days of the old testament they were walking along with the angels but with jesus christ the holy spirit is revealed unto us as our guide but what is very special the word of god says do not pay attention to him and listen to what he says the holy spirit requires that we pay attention to him and listen to what he teaches us because 
rebellion meant the Lord would not forgive us because God is in the Holy Spirit. We are to listen to what he says and do what he says. And if we do that, he will be an enemy to our enemies and he will oppose those who oppose us. And the, the Holy Spirit, all the angel of the Lord, goes ahead of us to bring us into the promised land. But even then in the promised land, they are gods, they are other nations. God says we should not bow down and worship those gods. Instead, we should destroy everything that is not of the Lord that we find in the land of the promise or the promised land. And that would take away diseases from us and it would bring a blessing upon our water and food. And that would cause us to be productive and it would also give us a long life. We would live out our youthfulness, obedience. And then the Lord would send terror ahead of us to destroy our enemies. And the Lord says that he would not do it in one year. He would destroy them step by step. Because taking away the sin, I mean taking away our obstacles at once could create another problem. In the times of the children of God, killing all the tribes at once would leave some land unoccupied. And if some land was unoccupied, he would, it would cause numerous animals to come and become a problem to them. The problem would now no longer be people and the gods, but the animals. So, and then he says they would be too numerous because the people were still few. That's why he says, I will do it bit by bit, step by step, bit by bit, little by little. And even as when we are faced with situations, you will see all of them one by one, God will eliminate. And he emphasizes it as we read further. He says that our enemies are so many, but one by one he overcomes them. And so we need to remain in obedience. What is key? We are not alone. To the people of the Old Testament, he gave angels. To us, he's given us the blood of Jesus, but also the Holy Spirit, our helper. I say we live in much better times. And so when the word of God was given to me to share with the child of God that had been given to me to help, I felt my job was done. And so also, having shared with you this word, I feel my journey for today's video is done. I hope you've been blessed. I have been blessed. Until tomorrow, God bless you. Have a good day and bye-bye.